welcome to my channel. Well, knife modifications. A lot of times when you get a knife, you have to modify it. Sometimes you have to modify it to your own personal, you know, taste and everything. And um, like I said, my biggest modification was uh, changing this to a easy on-off type of clip. And uh, the other one was this retention right here. <laughs> Look at that. I fixed it. Now, the way I fixed it, I'm not necessarily going to recommend, because I know a lot of people are going to say, I got to do is take a hair dryer and heat that up and pull it out. And, uh... But what I did was, I looked at, at how it works. You know, it spreads the material, and then it retains it with these little pinches, you know, on either side. Now, there's a couple approaches you can do if you want to make this easier to come out. I don't, going in is no problem. Um, it's just I wanted to be able to use this the way it's designed. You know, push, and you're free. That's enough retention. If you get beyond that, where it takes two hands, you defeat the whole purpose of the one-handed. Like this, you can just carry it with the sheath in your hand if you're carrying it loose, and pow, you can drop it. Same way with, you know, like um, extracting it when it's on your hip. All right, now what I did was I took my Case Mini Trapper Warncliffe blade, which I like, and I got in there. And I was just changing this angle a little bit. Now this is why I don't recommend it because uh, you can mess this up. You can take off too much material. You don't want it so that you just take that whole hump out. And then you, ha then you have no retention. But what I was doing is, you see how sharp that is down there? I just wanted to slope it a little bit. Make that angle a little bit easier. Now, you could do the same thing, you know, if you're not using this part of your knife, you could carve on this if you wanted to, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to mess the knife up. I'd rather mess the sheath up, if anything else. And another thing, a lot of people talk about, they don't like these handles. I like the ergonomics of the handles, and uh, the slipperiness, man, that's so easy to fix with a lot of different things. Uh, grip tape, like hockey tape, or uh, skateboard tape, or whatever. You know, just put a few pieces in there. Uh, a bicycle inner tube, you could just have it fit in there, and then it's all rubber and still padded and everything, but act, uh, offers more traction and grippiness. You can get micarta scales for these, but they're like 42 bucks. I mean, think about that. I can, I can almost get a case knife for 42 bucks. I can definitely get... Uh, a couple of rough riders and everything and and those are knives this is just a handle and i like my carta i like the way it feels um i like the way it looks i like my carta do i like it for 42 dollars <laughs> you know that's what i i think about a lot of times when i'm looking at something i go all right do you have something that's you know and, and this will really get you if you're collecting if you're sinking all right this knife right here is the tank. They make smaller, uh, you know, less thick knives, but still beast of knives, uh, you know, kind of things, tough knives. And two of them I've been looking at, uh, one more than the other is the Harpoon, the BK-18, and the, uh, the Nesmuk. I like the, the Harpoon a little bit better than the Nesmuk one but both of those are good ones uh the harpoon weighs 7.2 ounces basically the same as a buck 110 this thing weighs a pound now you might you know you might look think about it like oh well it's just a pound you know if you got it on your belt you won't even know you will notice it i will notice it i'm not a huge guy man i'm uh i think i weigh like maybe 125 130 i used to weigh like 140 but uh i've lost weight but this adds up 
you know, if you're just walking around and everything. Now, if you're out in the woods, it's no big deal. And another thing I was thinking about was I, I sharpened this blade. I, I basically put it... <laughs> this is kind of funny. I put it on the, uh, the workshop. And because this knife is so heavy, it tilted the, the workshop angle, precision adjust or whatever. It, it tilted the thing down, so I'd have to hold the back of the workshop while guiding the blade. And it took a while to reprofile this because I'm kind of a perfectionist, so I was looking at like this last angle up here, and it just wasn't matching up, and I just kept working and working and working on it. And it's the same way on this side. You can kind of see it. See it right there? that's not completely down on there you know but after a while you get tired of doing that but i could have put it on the uh the belt sander workshop and everything sharp but the problem with those are it takes skill you know and uh this is this is not a knife i want to i want to butcher the uh edge on when it since it already had a fairly good edge from the factory, it wasn't really wonky, you know. Uh, a belt sander is taking a lot of material off every second. A lot more than you just going like this, you know, or anything like that. But I was thinking, all right, for those people that think about bug out bags or you know, inch bags and all this other stuff, I'm never coming home and uh, get home bags and all the other stuff. Do you ever consider a sharpener? <clears throat> because if you've got any knives and you're expecting to last any time with them, everything, if you've got some super steel or something like that that's uh, hard to sharpen, uh, you know, a dull knife is almost worthless compared to anything else, you know. Uh, and it, it's pretty easy to fix. It's fairly simple. You can get like one of these Smith sharpeners. It's pretty useful, you know. It's got a pointed end. It's got a flat end. It's got a round end. It's got a hook groove. Uh, these are very useful, and they're only like about ten bucks or so. You know, you can get them at Walmart and stuff like that, or you can go the, the Victorinox way. You know, again, similar, you know, concept with the little ceramic uh, pull-through thing here to hone. Would work probably better on this, you know, these type of nice pocket knives. And then, because you're not reprofiling everything, man, you can just keep yourself going quite a while with the Lansky Turnbox. This is not the, you know, the diamond rod ones. They make them with diamonds, but they're inexpensive. It stores well rattles a little bit probably if you're worrying about you know this weighs less than this one because it's metal um <clears throat> but yeah modifications uh one of them is you know you want you want your knife sharp how sharp i don't i don't want this thing razor sharp you know but i want it sharp enough to you can do push cuts. You can kind of see. That might be just because of the <clears throat> the grind and everything. The angle, the way you're doing it. Let me get a piece of paper here. Texas. You could save $506. <laughs> you can save that. All right, so let's quit being silly and try to do an edge cut. So it's much sharper than it came out of the box. And it, like I said, it could still use some work. But man, a lot of times, man, I'm, I'm a perfectionist. I'm looking at that and like, eh, the angle is just not quite matching up. And it would be easy just to do some passes, you know, on the, on the belt sander and just like give it a convex edge. But uh, these type of edges are easier to maintain, I think, in the field than a convex Unless you know what you're doing. Because uh, you've got to get that kind of roll to it instead of a flat. These you can just set an angle and just go like this. And sharpen it up. Or you can, you know, do the, the standard way. You would, you know, go back and forth. But still, there you go. I'm just 
rambling on too much. Um, yeah, I, it's just like with the SE. When I got the SEs, it was like, wow, why didn't I look at these before with these Beckers? It's like, I'm, I'm not super into the overbuilt, you know, heavy-duty type of knives. It's, it's nice to have one or two examples of those if you need them. But for everyday, practical, all-around carry and stuff, um, a lot of times, this is less weight. I put it right, I put a Kydex uh, uh, tech lock on it and everything so I can put it on my, on my belt. <laughs> Get up here. Cross draw, like that. So it's real easy to get to. It's longer than the SC3. And it, you know, with a coat and everything, or a shirt, it doesn't stick out much. I've also got my flashlight here. Got tactical set up here. <laughs> like a, you remember those samurais where they had, they had swords sticking them all over the place? That's, that's kind of with me on this stuff. Um, but yeah, not that I'm a samurai. The old samurai. Oh, another good, a, a good sword uh, video or film, if you've never seen it, is uh, Zadoichi. He's the blind swordsman. Oh, man. It's, um, oops. Got to bleep that out. Anyways, um, thank you for watching, and have a nice day.